Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Ball Watch Company with the Ball Engineer 3 Starlight 2. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, full in-depth review, also go over the points of consideration at the end. And also throughout this video, if you have any further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page where you can learn more, buy the watch as well as book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. So what comes to mind when you think of a versatile everyday timepiece, say around 1,500 to 2,000 bucks? There's a lot of brands that you could throw into the mix, but one that probably is overlooked quite a bit is going to be Ball Watch Company. Ball is a brand that I like to champion quite a bit, just given the fact that they have the same roots from Cleveland, Ohio that I have, of course, switching over production to Switzerland many years ago, but still a lot of the same elements of producing excellent, often over-engineered timepieces is still very much present in their modern offering. But today we're going to be looking at an everyday option from the Engineer 3 Starlight 2. So taking a look at the Starlight 2 on the wrist, we have a case that measures at 40 millimeters across and a relatively compact lug-to-lug -lug of 46 point Five millimeters while also sitting at 13 and a half millimeters thick. At first glance, it's a sporty but elegant case with a mix of high polished surfaces to the case sides and bezel and the brush finishing applied to the top of the lugs. Ball offers two attachment options for this model, a rubber strap with a pin buckle and a three link oyster style bracelet. Now the bracelet measures 20 millimeters at the lugs and does not taper smaller towards the friction set butterfly clasp. Brush finishing is applied to the top and underside surfaces while the ends of the exterior links are polished, matching the finishing scheme of the case. There are plenty of sizing links throughout the bracelet, including two half links. And rather than using a pushpin system to secure the links together in the bracelet, Ball uses screwed in links to enhance security and small cutouts are provided at the end links for easy access to the spring bars that hold the bracelet to the case. Now Ball has a few different bracelet options that they utilize. A lot of them in my own personal taste, I find a bit stiff and a bit clunky on the wrist for lack of a better term. This one is an improvement compared to some other offerings, getting some nice articulation with the links compared to some others, while also getting a nice clasp that is going to be hidden and doesn't have the excess bulk. The friction locking is a bit tedious at times to lock and unlock, but it does do the job and won't come unsecured without your intention of doing so. In terms of the wear of this piece, because of the compact lug to lug, it is going to work closer to that of a 39 millimeter case. The larger outside polished bezel is also going to aid in the dial appearing a bit smaller. So 39 millimeters, I think, is a good representation of how this one is going to wear on the wrist. It is a bit on the thicker side at just over 13 millimeters for a watch of a three hand variety. So just keep that in mind, but still pretty good wearing dimensions for a variety of wrists out there. At the standard three o'clock position, we have an oversized screw down crown, which is embossed with the signature double R logo from Ball. The crown has a tactile feel when engaging to set the functions. Unscrewing to the first position will allow you to hand wind the movement. Extending to the second point, you then can change the day date function that's gonna be located at the three o'clock position on the dial. And then when pulling out to the farthest point, you then can adjust the time while stopping the second hand in the process, so hacking seconds here. And this watch is an everyday piece after all, so when you do have this crown screwed in, it will offer 100 meters of water resistance. So the dial here is protected by a slightly domed sapphire crystal treated with anti-reflective coating to provide a clear view what is appearing underneath. The color of the dial is in navy blue, and the surface has a subtle sunburst effect and some reflection to it. Along the very outside edge of the dial, we have a beveled chapter ring with a minute track. It's a combination of thin hash marks for individual minutes and bold rectangular markers for each of the five minute increments. Sliding inwards, probably one of the more distinct attributes of this watch, the hour markers are laid out in a large Arabic numerals, each composed with Ball Watch's signature micro gas tubes housing tritium. So in total, 45 tubes are used on the dial with each hour outlined in white print to further define the numerals. On this particular dial, the tubes are placed in the recesses so that the tubes are flush with the dial itself, not having any direct verticality uh, when it comes to stacking the hands on top, which is a common uh, issue when dealing with tritium. This adds a level of visual sophistication to the dial that really has to be appreciated in person and goes to show that Ball was really trying to do something outside of the box here. And just a quick note on tritium, Tritium is a different illuminating material compared to the more popular Superluminova. It doesn't shine as bright, but it will not need to be charged. 
will have a constant illumination, will last up to 20 to 25 years on average in terms of the illumination. And when you're in complete darkness, I find tritium much more of a reliable material compared to others, given that it's going to constantly shine. At the three o'clock position, we have a day date window with the lack of any true steel outlines. So a bit abrupt when transitioning from the dial to that date window. At the center, we have blunted steel hands, which also are going to feature tritium within. And the second hand is going to have a yellow tip to match the anti-magnetic text at the six o'clock position. Now turning the watch over, we have a solid screw down case back. And in the center of the case back is an embossed biplane image in a satin finish on full display with the ball watch company logo in Swiss made in contrasting polish. Beneath the case back lies the caliber, the RR1102, which is based off the 2836-2 from ETA. So for the most part, this movement is going to be rather straightforward. It operates at four Hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour, offers a 38 hour power reserve. You're also getting hacking and hand winding. In addition to having some anti-magnetic and anti-shock properties as well. You have a classic regulating pin for some simple regulation that you can even do on the fly and servicing should be a breeze for pretty much any watchmaker out there. So you're getting some nice peace of mind in terms of what is coming with this movement. Rather straightforward, pretty much a simple ETA 2836-2 architecture that this one is based off of. So that comes with some conventional undertones in terms of the finish and what it's going for, but also getting that peace of mind that comes with the serviceability, reliability, and regulation of these movements. All right, so now to unpack looking at this Engineer 3 Starlight 2. So in terms of what this one is going for, Ball at times has some pretty different takes on an everyday watch. In terms of the manufacturing and the build quality, I think they're great tool watches, but sometimes their designs are a little bit wacky. But this one is a fun execution of their use of tritium and doing it in a way that I've never seen a brand actually utilize it from. This is a watch that when you see in person, it really does stand out quite a bit. When you turn off the lights, there's truly nothing else like this. But is that always a good thing? You know, I'll leave that up to the end consumer and what they're looking for in a watch. But there's no doubt that this is kind of a fun take on the conventional ball wash design. When you stack this up against the rest of the competition, I think it does a very good job as well. Pretty reliable movement on the inside, nice finishing of the hands and the dial, also getting a bracelet that does a pretty good job. The friction fit of the clasp is a little bit cumbersome to deal with at times, but still quite good. Bracelet I find in this instance is better than even something like the Marvelites bracelet. I find the articulation of the links to be improved as well as the just links themselves to be a bit less stocky than that of some other bracelets from Ball. So at the end of the day, a pretty solid everyday watch from Ball with some unconventional approaches when it comes to the layout of the dial, which, which again is very much in alignment with what this brand is all about in their use of tritium. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that as well as it does help out the channel. Also, if you're in the market for this watch, it is available on teddyballthestar.com. We're a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. Also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we carry, unlike a lot of places online. So if something goes wrong, you don't have to pay the bill for it. We also offer price match. So if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer, just fill out the form. We'll be in contact with you. And again, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into the content that we're creating here, as well as on our main channel, of course. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.